Yeah, I, I, I want to be. Hello, folks. We're live. Welcome to this special Wednesday night presentation. We're doing something called examine any sherry, any cream sherry. Sorry, because there's different types of cream sherry. Cream sherry. You know, there's. There's different types sherry. of sherry, right? Dry sherry. There's cream. dry sherry. There's cocktail sherry. There's cooking sherry. There's cream sherry. I guess the most popular is cream, which is sort of the sweet, sweet one. But uh, you can get a you can get a, a plethora of sherries. Now uh, I'll tell you a quick joke. Quick joke. A lady was at a funeral for her husband, and a family friend was there, and she said, "Could you say something? Could you say a word?" She asked him, "Could you say a word?" And he said, "Yes." And he stood up and he said, "Plethora," and she said, "That means a lot." So anyway, um, <laughs> I thought she, I thought he was going to say sherry. I would have said word. I want you. Could you get up and say a word? And I would have said word. Everybody. Nah, word. She, he he said plethora, and then the the lady said that means a lot. All right, yeah. but anyway, here I'm in Louisiana. James P. Madonna is in New Jersey, and and Ronnie S. is in Florida. Yeah. Two Southerners, one Northerner. Uh, oh, outnumbered. Uh, I like the word cornucopia, abundance, you know, like the big horn of plenty with all the. Right. Well, yeah. But I'm kind of half northern or half southerner, so it's kind of right. even. So it originated in Long Island, right? <laughs> right. I'm originally from New York, but I lived hey, in Florida for about two years. Right. Ethan, you can get some cream sherry. It's pretty inexpensive, really. That's what I told uh, Ronnie Simpson. I said he was on his way to. Uh, Total wines or something. I says, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of sherries in these stores, and some of them are inexpensive. It's a type of wine. I'm gonna highlight myself for a moment. Um, so, uh, but we're gonna go around. I'm gonna try to be fair with everybody. I have one from Spain, and this bottle is blue glass. You can see the glass is blue, cobalt blue. Yeah, cobalt blue. And this was introduced in 1882. Been on the market since 1882, and it's called Harvey's. Bristol Cream. Oh, I saw, I saw that one. I was thinking of buying that. I, I, I saw, I grew up with that commercial when I was a kid. It's, now here is the designation that it is imported under a royal warrant for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, official sherry provider for the royal household. And uh, somebody was writing an article about that and said, well, you know, the royal family of England has a lot of investments in sherry, certain scotch companies, certain rum companies. So they said naturally they're going to promote and give a royal warrant to companies they have an investment in. I said, it makes sense, doesn't it not? But this one here I bought, it's about $16, so it's not super cheap. 17.5% alcohol. It's produced in Jerez, Spain. Jerez, which is south. Uh, close to the African, uh, you know, the Mediterranean and African area. And uh, it's a blend of many different sherries, and they go down, 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 and they make this. Now, there's about 10 other Bristol cream, not Bristol cream, but about 10 other Harveys. But in the USA, I think we only get the Bristol cream, but they have dry sherry, cotton, you know, all kind of fancy pants sherries, but we get this one. So that's what I've got, 17.5% alcohol, no age statement, no sherry has an age statement because it's a blend. You might have a year old wine, but it could be blended with three year old, five year old, 10 year old, 12 year old, 18 year old, and they just, they have them on a rack and they keep dumping them, dumping them, dumping them, and they blend them together. So it's complicated. Now, James P. Manon in New Jersey has, He set okay. this off with the musical. That's right. I have also a cream sherry from Spain. And uh, it was the grapes are grown in the Jerez region. And it's probably near Gibraltar and, or the Costa del Sol because it's on the Mediterranean, right? F facing uh, Morocco, North Africa. This one is called Savory and James. Ah. The quality uh, sherry it was uh, under fifteen dollars. I don't remember it exactly, but but I never, I never splurge on anything. 
uh, unless it's well worth it and and uh, money is no object. Now, uh, yeah, as you can see, the name, the Harez, and I got there's some information here. Um, it's 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 I don't know how accurate it is, but from the company, clear chocolate, brown color, attractive yeasty aromas of fresh baked bread and chocolate covered dried fruits. My goodness, with syrupy, vibrant, very sweet, fat body, and, and a tingling. Oh my God. Carefree candy pecan. Yeah, the violin's playing out. Grand muffins, dried apricots, and castel vetrano olive. A rum soaked raisin filled with soft tannins and the suggestion of oak. You know what I say about that? Uh, as, as, as the Polish say, uh, bulshitsky. Hold on. There's still too much bulshitsky in there. Now, I like your Lacoste. I like your Lacoste shirt. Yeah, I have a whole collection that was uh, given to me every Christmas by a friend, a Philippine friend that owned the construction company, and uh, she was uh, very magnanimous. I mean, generous, and uh, you know, uh, she she didn't want nothing in return. I tried, I tried, but anyway, um, yeah. They fit really well. They're, they're they're tapered. They're not like like a lot of American polo shirts that are just boxy and you know for big bellied, uh, rotund people, men. You know they're tapered. Okay. Lacoste, Lacoste is French, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Isa Isa Lacoste. Uh, I don't. That could be just a name, like Hagen Das ice cream. Was yeah, not it was, you, you, no, 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 no. You're right. It was a merger. It was a merger. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, they, you know how names are and logos and all that. Uh, Quaker Oats, the old geezer was didn't he never existed? The guy with the rosy cheeks. Uh, this extra fine cream cherry comes exclusively from select vineyards in the Zona de Jerez Superior. Uh, the world's finest area for production of sherry. It is aged through the time-honored Savory and James Solera system, which was established in 1780. Finally, it reaches full maturity, delicate, at, and, and at the same time, unusually rich and delicious. And uh, it has the... Uh, yeah, I have that too. Yeah. Yeah, you got the you got the Jerez uh, uh, region uh, emblem, and then you got uh, you got uh, whoo, hold on, hold on, alcohol by volume, alcohol by volume. There you go, seventeen point five percent alcohol by volume, and uh, it wasn't expensive. It was under fifteen bucks, and I'm very, I was very impressed. Uh, of acquiring uh, or procuring this uh, imported Spanish cream sherry. Okay, and 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 there's no cork for me to struggle with. Which right, is another mine too. Just a tw twist cap. Okay, here come here comes. Uh, um. Okay, I've got the Don Benigno cream sherry. It's a product of Spain. Yeah. It's imported by Sorrenti Imports, Stamford, Connecticut. That's my uh, my brother-in-law's last name, Benengo, and that guy that the uh, sports dude. What's his name? So I picked this up for ten ninety-nine. A total wine today. Oh, okay. I've also got that little Jerez uh, label there, there. and this is um. 17.5, same as James. And mine, and mine. Like the three muscatels. So this is producido y embotellado por Pedro Rodriguez y Hijos, Spain. So it's produced and bottled by Pedro Rodriguez and Sons. Right, Pedro Rodriguez and Sons. I already poured it. I don't think I've ever had 
cream sugar, to be honest with you. So I'm looking forward to trying this. Okay. Can you speak Spanish? Yeah. Yeah, I can. I'm pretty good at it. You're going to like the way it tastes. I guarantee it. Does your family have like a Puerto Rican background? No. No, I'm Irish. I just, um, I studied Spanish in school. Oh, you studied I, it. Okay. I okay. kind of practiced it. Yeah. Interestingly, uh, Ireland and Spain have a common they're background. Both, they're both uh, Celtic. Well, there's uh, Celtics in Spain, right? Yeah, and, and Ireland and Spain are not that far apart from each other. They're kind of like, like and they're that. Both, they're, they're both on the Atlantic coast. Right, and they both used to uh, fight against England, so they um, have a common, common heritage. All right. It's a nice uh, smell to this thing. It's a nice, uh, grapey smell. Well, y'all, we have a new addition here. We have a new addition. Hey, Welcome to right. we have now We have an even north versus south, two northerners and two southerners. We have a southern. Oh, southern hold on, run. hold on, hold on. I'm not a 100% northerner. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I say 50-50. I was counting you as the south being in Florida. Oh, OK. Now there's BC's beer reviews, but he's doing wine tonight. Show us the bottle. You got Christian Brothers. Yeah, I've got Christian Brothers. I just unsealed this just now, as you guys were talking, and um, I'm kind of out of my comfort zone. I'm generally beers, but I generally use this for cooking. So um, this is going to be new territory for me for tasting. So. Um, forgive me if if it seems like out of whack. So that's all right. What's it, the ABV on that? About fourteen or seventeen? Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Uh, I really haven't looked it over, but well, you can, you can look about right. So you can look over. You can look over it while I'm uh, doing mine, and then we'll get back to you. So um, all right. Tell y'all a little something about Christian Brothers. The Christian Brothers wines were started by the uh, Order of Christian Brothers, who does schools. They do schools and colleges, like Christian Brothers School in New Orleans and the Christian Brothers College in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And they were started by that uh, LaSalle, you know, um, a, a, a French Saint LaSalle. Um, but anyway. Um, they made their own wines and brandy until 1987 when they had a brother, one of their monks, Brother Theodore. He got so old in his 90s, he, I think, and he, he said, I can't do it anymore. So he retired and they couldn't find another brother to make their products. So what the Christian Brothers order did is they made a contract with Heaven Hill of Kentucky to produce the brandy and sherry for them. And it was an agreement where Heaven Hill would produce the products and then the Christian Brothers order would get a cut of the profits. And I know James P. Madonna has had positive interaction with Heaven Hill products. So uh, family. Yeah, and, and their prices too, both quality and price. Right. So here's, I'm pouring a little bit of the sherry. I, I better not drink too much, but um, this, um, like I said, is 17 and a half percent. It's produced under a Royal warrant for Queen Elizabeth II, at least, you know, on paper. And um, it's got a, a color code when the uh, Harvey's is blue, it's cold and Harvey's is still blue. So it'll it'll turn white as it warms up and uh, it says chill it. So here we go, it's very dark amber, like a mahogany. And they said on the website, they use 80% Palomino grapes and 20% Pedro Jimenez grapes. And they said they're on both sides of the mountain. So the west side gets like rain and humidity and the east side gets dry Mediterranean uh, climate. And they said it makes a great difference. So then they blend them together. And, uh, but you know, the Mediterranean is very dry and um, arid, almost like a desert climate. So um, here we go. I was hoping that somebody would have Taylor cream sherry, but no one did. That's an interesting take on sherry from New York State. They use those uh, New York grapes, the Concord grapes. Totally different experience. 
the um, Morgan David 2020 grapes. Right, Morgan David uses the, 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 those, those types of uh, foxy, what they call foxy grapes. All right, anyway, so got a lot of alcohol legs. Just, I'll tell you what, do not, do not session this wine. What I mean is do not think you're going to knock back a bunch and it's going to be okay. It is not going to be okay. I got about two ounces, three ounces. That's about where you want to stop. You hear that, BC? You hear that, everybody? All right. The aroma. Yeah, yeah the, whole, the whole community. <laughs> the aroma is rich. It's rich. Yeah. It's musty in the nose. And uh, if you're used to drinking white wine or red wine, this is a different world. This is not like what you're used to drinking or rosé. This is like upper level, high alcohol. A lot of times these sherries are infused or fortified with brandy. Brandy, which is a liquor from wine. So, I mean, it's dangerous. I mean, th this is no joke. But uh, anyway, here we go. Cheers. So taste. Cheers. Cheers. Same thing applies to port. You, you know, you got to be careful with that. It's very similar to port wine. Right? Port, marsala, port, marsala, Madeira, Madeira, and uh, Sherry are four very delicious wines that are treacherous. Um, are they all considered dessert wines? Yes, because they're above 14% alcohol. If it's below 14%, it's a, a, what they call a table wine. Uh, well, this is very strong in the flavor. It's sweet. It's grapey. It's like sweet, rich, overripe, if you want to say. Uh, dates, grapes, sugar, alcohol. Um, I think it would go well with some uh, sharp cheeses. And you could think of different sharp cheeses on some uh, wheat, wheat crackers, maybe like a uh, Triscuit or something like that. Um, <clears throat> might go well with some uh, sun dried shrimp, shrimp, and um, maybe some cream cheese, cream cheese. But, um, oh, and chives, chives. But uh, it's very nice, maybe capers. It's very nice, but I mean, I would just be careful. I'm, it, it's, we're telling you to be careful. I, I think this is a fabulous product for $16 a bottle. I would highly recommend it. If you've never had Harvey's Bristol Cream, I implore you to go buy it because it is unique. Um, but like I say, you, you better be ready for some unusual flavors, body, tasting notes, finish. It's, it's a sweet product. It's it's different. Okay, now James is going to do another interesting product, which I've never had in my life, but I'd love to try. Well, I poured it, and... Uh I tell you, even the cork smelled like candy fruits. Full screen, full screen ahead. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, oh! I thought you were. It's causing trouble right now. So you, were, you know how it works. You were. Oh, you know, there we go. Uh, now, I think has a lot of time. really very aromatic, to say the least. Ooh. Okay, the aroma smelled like the cork. Very desserty, dessert wine. A wine that you would not want to dessert. Oh, by the way, I have my favorite Dollar Tree glass that also Mr. Tirio has. Thick, thick, heavy right. duty for a buck, the best bang for the buck in glassware. I don't care what your hoity-toity uh, snobs say out there in the community about your glassware. Baba Booey, the educated <laughs> consumer. Baba Booey. Like the Sims commercial. Mm. That's nice. Not too sweet. Mama monkey. I don't like monkeys. They're, they're troublemakers. As a creature, they're troublemakers. Anyway. There's a, in the Philippines, they have a huge, scary-looking eagle that hunts and eats monkeys, monkey meat. Anyway, it has a 
It has a, an aroma and a flavor of a, a really good marsala. But you know what? It's, it's a little, it's, it's semi-sweet in flavor. It, it it smells sweeter than it is. What I And I like about it being not overly sweet. It, it is a semi-sweet flavor. It has the wonderful dried fruity uh, flavors that I mentioned before with their with their little drama that they were describing their product and a lot of what they said is true. Excuse me. I had some uh, roast suckling pig before in the, in the Cuban restaurant. I'm trying to digest. Anyway, I'm sure this will help. Now, Look, look at my comment. Look at my comment. I'm getting lots of oak in my nose. Why, you you shoved the acorns up your nostrils? No, I'm like just from, no, just from smelling the um, cherry. Oh. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you got the woodsy aroma. You got like a whole, I hate to say it again, cornucopia of flavors, which is very similar to what these companies describe um, yeah. but what I what I notice comparing this to the tailor is that the tailor is sweeter even though I love Concord grapes this is like a semi-sweet um, flavor but uh, I, I'm gonna try marinating chicken in this with me spicy dry rub. I'm, I'm going to start doing what BC does. I'm going to try this in, uh, in some cooking recipes. Yeah. I even tried I even tried more salad and scrambled eggs and uh, sausage and it was really good. Yeah. I like tomatoes in, with eggs. Tomato, tomatoes and feta cheese with mushrooms I had one time. A Greek, I think they called it a Greek yeah. omelet. Uh, excellent. This is an excellent product. This is really, well, this is room temperature, but this is going in the refrigerator because it's a dessert wine. But it's exceptional. I highly recommend it. It's not expensive. Um, Savory and James imported from Spain with the same grapes, the, the, the grapes that are grown in the same region as the two gentlemen that are on this panel. All right. And uh, I definitely... We get it again because I think this is an all-purpose dessert wine. I think it will be outstanding for cooking as well as sipping to take the edge off of life, being that it's a higher alcohol content than uh, your typical wines. But it, but the key word is not too sweet, which right, right. Some of them you have I, maybe they put, they add sugar. Some of these other companies, I mean, they might. I mean, a, a flavored whiskey like a Southern Comfort is way sweeter than this dessert wine. Oh yeah, you know, like there are a lot of flavored uh, hooches out there that are uh, that are overly sweet. You know, I think I might bring some. I might bring some Southern Comfort for um, Fandango Friday. Yeah, Fandango Friday because I. It's the headquarters is in New Orleans, and I can get it pretty easily. Even a small oh, it's a, it's a flavored, it's a flavored uh, American, uh, I guess, whiskey or uh, or bone. All right, so yeah. here's my product again. Uh, so I got the same impression that James got from the smell. This is a really, really strong, but but um, really nice smell. It kind of, it has like the dessert wine smell, but it smells it smells stronger. Maybe it's a few it's a little bit higher up in ABV, and it smells better. Honestly, it's a really really good smell. Uh, kind of like I guess of grapes you you do pick up the grapes, definitely, which would be a wine thing, but it's just different than dessert wines that I've had before or port wines. Port wines. I've had port wines before. I've never had sherry. Which I guess okay. they're both considered dessert wine. Yeah, they are. Can you show the bottle again? Okay, thank you. 
Cream Sherry. And I got a pretty good deal on this. I think it was 11 bucks, um, plus some tax. Which I don't think is bad for a 750 milliliter. The taste is exceptional. It, I mean, it's great. Um, I know it's a little high in ABV, so you don't want to drink a lot of it, but it, I've never had a wine like this. Like it, um, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. And it, it has like a, a better taste, more of a flavorful taste than like regular um, red wines, I'd say. I think it tastes better than, than red wine. Um, it's just robust in the flavor department, in the smell department, and I guess in the ABV department. I've never tried. I've definitely never tried this. I wasn't sure when I when when um when we were first doing it, but I've never had a wine like that tastes like this, smells like this. Definitely not. And I like the style. Of this maybe it's a bit strong, so you don't want to like sit down and session it, like Ron says. But it's delicious, man. It it's it's a it's a good one. Back in the mid '90s, a lady that used to live here in this house, uh, we used to drink um. Dessert wines, cherry Madeira port, Marsala, and she liked it. Uh, but that's what we would drink when we drink wine with these flavors. So that was these. That was my experience with wine. We, we liked all these uh, dessert wines, you know. Right. Yeah, I've had. Um, anyway, I've, had so port, I've had port wine. I think that might have been the only other dessert wine that I've had. I never had Madeira. Right. Not masala. No, I mean I've had chicken marsala, but not wine. But not the marsala. But not the marsala wine. No. Nope. Okay. So we got three people that are pleased so far. So let's see if the fourth guy is going to be pleased. Yeah. Um, as far as this goes, I'm getting this. Now what's the, what's the ABV? What's the ABV? What's the ABV? Uh, according to the bottle on here, it's a. 18% APV. Wow. So, All right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know I'm a big guy. I, uh, <laughs> I'm just talking from my experience. I'm kind of, I don't know, um, got a high tolerance. But even with something like this, this will kind of knock me back pretty hard. So, I mean, uh, I got to agree with Ryan with what he was saying. This you want to do in moderation, no doubt, because uh, I've had some stuff that was like either between 13 to 17 percent, and they still kind of knocked me back. So, uh, Ryan, I got to tell you, I got to agree with you on this one. <laughs> you definitely want to be careful with this type of thing. So, no doubt. Uh, no doubt. <clears throat> I've had Marcellus and tiramisu, but as far as this goes, I mean, I'm getting a lot of sweetness, but you could definitely smell that alcohol in there. And it's definitely sweet. I can see why they call this a dessert wine. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd probably drink this and... <laughs> I remember most of the night. <laughs> so, I mean, this is really nice. They're out of California. And, uh, I mean, it's all around good. I mean, I don't know why I haven't drank this before without cooking. Yeah, it, so. right? that's, that's what I'm wondering. Why? How come this is not more well-known? Yeah, I mean, some things when you cook, it just makes it... Uh, I don't know how to put it. Um, it just enhances the flavoring of everything else that you're cooking with. So, I mean, <clears throat> it's just crazy on how when you cook with something, but when you actually drink it, it gives you more of a new perspective on things. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what else to add to this. It's really nice. I mean, it's really nice. Are you? Are, I'll ask you a question. Are you picking up any woodiness, like oak barrels, or not? No. Well, you know, honestly, I, I actually am. I actually am. No. Um, I mean, like I said, I mean, this literally is. I'm more of a beer guy, and this 
Yeah, right. Me really, too. Uh, I'm, I'm really getting uh, took it out of my comfort zone. So I'm learning as I'm doing this here. <coughs> so I'm really well, digging it's okay. it though. It's okay. It's okay to get out of your comfort zone sometimes. Um, one thing I'm no one thing I'm noticing about what I'm drinking is a pretty strong golden <laughs> raisin. And if you ever buy those uh, sun-made golden raisins, this one has a strong golden raisin flavor. Um, now, we keep emphasizing this. You, you are not going to sit there and drink half a bottle unless you have some kind of like insanity in your mind, you know. But um, we, we, we're, we are probably going to address the Madeiras, the Port, the Marsalas down the road because I don't see why it wouldn't be a good idea to do that. We're going to do uh, sake later on. Sake can knock you for a loop too if you're not careful. But um, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, Y'all can hear me all right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure because, you know, we, we had some, we had a major internet crash two days ago where uh, not only my system, but all around here uh, all failed for about five hours. So it got me kind of like um, nervous, you know. I'm going to do the comments in a, in a minute. Uh, I'm really liking this uh, Harvey's Bristol Cream. It is the most popular cream sherry in the world. Uh, now, in the, in the United States, the most popular cream sherry might be like Taylor, you know, but. Um, hey, Ron, I have a question. Did you hear the the story about there was a, supposedly, I think the 1890s, um, I think an English aristocrat woman who, um, I guess a lot of the sherry went through Bristol, England, and she was there and um, she brought up. Somebody called, I think what you have, the product you have, that somebody called it milk. And she said, well, if this is milk, then then this is sherry. And that's how they came out with the sherry name from when she said that. I have not heard that story, but um, it sounds like it's plausible. Oh no, she said no, 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 not sure. She said if this is milk, then this is cream, and that's how they got the cream oh, okay. name for sherry. Cream sherry, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because of the sweetness and it gives it like a creamy uh, demeanor to it. Right. Okay. Now score. No, I have not heard that story before, but I'm glad you brought it up. All right. Um, I bet this will make a good ma marinade with pot rust. You know, like this kind of wine. That's a good point. These are really good. These wines that we're talking about are really good for marinades, add-ons into a, a pan, uh, maybe a pressure cooker. Like I said, even fried, even scrambled eggs with um, sausage, they work well with me. Um, Chardonnay. Char okay. Chardonnay is a little different, though, right? It's like, a white, much like a white, it's like a white wine, right? Chardonnay. Yeah, sure. It's a white yeah. wine. It's it's low, lower, low, much lower alcohol. Um. Well, okay. So, um, I'm very pleased with this. I'm going to give it a solid A. Um. I've only had it twice. I bought a bottle back around five years ago, six years ago. I liked it. it was when they used to have the cork. Then they went to this twist cap. I still like it now. Um, I don't know what the complaint would be, why somebody would take issue with this. Um, do I yeah. plan to buy the Savory and James and all that? I do plan to buy those. I can get almost, endless, almost an endless supply of cream sherry. <laughs> it's not as obscure as Ronnie might think. There are a lot of people that know about cream sherry and it it's kind of like a niche. I've heard the name maybe before. But maybe niche. maybe I only heard it like in a movie or something. Like it sounds like it seems like an old fashioned yeah. kind of thing really. Yeah. A lot of that World War II movies. A lot that of World War II movies the British guys are drinking and they're saying killing, you know. What now James? That Harvey's Bristol Cream commercial play quite often. 
when I was a kid. Also, the uh, the uh, Colt 45 malt liquor commercial. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need more commercials like that. Yeah, and yeah. the other one. Um, I agree with that. All right, so I'm going to post the scores. Uh, I'm giving mine a... Um, I don't see why I wouldn't get a 95. I mean, this stuff is a classic for a reason. It's not all marketing. It's because people like it. Okay, now we're going to let James give his score. I will update the scores. I'm trying to look at the comments. Okay. Um, yeah, I would actually... Uh, next time I make sour brat, instead of using just the vinegar and pickling spices, I, was, I, I might add some dessert wine like this. To it because the German told me that you can add good wine to make to marinate a pot roast for sour brat. You know, it doesn't have to just be vinegar and pickling spices. But anyway, I'm going to give. Uh, I'm I'm so impressed with this. Well, I'm impressed with the glass for a dollar. But anyway, I'm so impressed with the wine. That, uh, I I'll give it a 99 percent out of a, out of a hundred. Um, only because I like to leave a little room for something that might come along and just blow my socks off. You know. Yeah, but how much room can you leave? leave? Now let me. Oh, it's one percent. Not much. It's like if you own, uh, if you own uh, 50, 51 percent of the company, you're still the boss. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, true. No matter what anybody says, 51%. Yeah, the bush. Hey, the bush. Ronnie shit uh, just uh, the bush. That always clears my sinuses. Now, Ronnie, what is your... <laughs> um, you want my grade? Ronnie, what is your score? What is your score for the Bagnino? I say this is the most excellent product. 100 out of 100. I mean, wow. if, you're grade, if you're grading it in the style... And, and if you're grading it just as a wine, I can't see a problem with it whatsoever. I think this might be the best tasting wine that I've, I've ever had, best smelling. I, I realize you gotta be a little bit careful with it, with it because it's strong, but the taste, man, is good. It's really, really, it's really, really good. I would say it's probably the best wine that I've ever, you know, tasted. Especially considering you didn't pay too, too, too much money for it. Right, right. It just, it has a different, Maybe it's because it's just so brand new to me that I've never had this taste. It's really a, like a refreshing taste as far as wine goes, I think. It's a unique flavor. Like if you've yeah, never had yeah. sherry, it's almost impossible to describe sherry to someone who's never had it. Now, uh, yeah, BC, what, BC, how do you describe this product that you've never actually drunk but you've uh, cooked with? Uh, you know, actually drinking this now, I mean, yeah, yeah, like I said, out of my comfort zone, but I'm really enjoying this in a way. And, you know, I want to give this at least a 94. At least. And, you know, it's really good. I mean, it's good with cooking. I mean, it really is because I use cream sherry and the dry sherry. What dishes do you usually use to, to cook with uh, this to cook with? Uh, uh, sometimes spaghetti, like say if I'm having a, when I'm starting with the onions and I've got to deglaze the pan, I'll pour about a cup of this and it'll actually mix well. And what I use is, is in the process, as I build from the onions, and start adding like the tomato, iced tomatoes and everything. I'll add this when I deglaze and uh, use Frank or um, bratwurst for meatballs. And I tell you what, the combination mm -hmm. of all the spices from the bratwurst and everything else just melt so well together. And <laughs> okay, so, so kind of like like a sausage dish. With yeah, it's kind of like a sausage. Yeah. So it just lends itself to everything in the pot. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. my, my brother in law made homemade spaghetti sauce uh, one Christmas Eve, and he put uh, chunks of venison pot roast that he, he had shot up in his uh, the Adirondacks, and he put that in the spaghetti sauce. 
Nobody knew it except me. He kind of like told me on the side, and everybody says, mm, "This meat is good." You know, it's, it's um, but you, it, but it's it's very lean, so it tends to dry out. Yeah, uh, yeah. as opposed to really yeah, like my grandmother liked pork neck bones and and the meatballs and the uh, she made something called brajol, which mm. is interesting. And uh, they, they stay moist because of the fat content. But when you're dealing yeah. with wild game or London broil, it dries out because it's, it's oh, just yeah. very yeah. clean. But uh, so um, I guess we're all pleased with it. And, and you're right. It, it'll not get – you know what else sneaks up on you? Sangria and Mai Tais. That yeah, sangria does, that. but not, no. it's not, it's not the same as that. It'll sneak up on you. Okay, now I'm gonna do some shout outs. We're gonna close out because I've been up since one. This is a true story. I got up you got at one o'clock. One. No, I did not get up at one o'clock. I got up at one forty-eight. Why? I went to sleep kind of early, you know. But anyway, um, now. But I'm, I'm like a night owl in reverse, you know, like I go to sleep so early that by the time I wake up, it's still in the middle. Most people are dead asleep well, at one in the morning, right? Two yeah, if you're getting up before 2 a.m., that's not the morning yet. That's that's still nighttime. Yeah, right. So I'm I'm walking around, starting a coffee pot, brushing my teeth, and uh, everybody yeah. else is dead asleep. So in, um, so in a way, you are you are nocturnal, even though you go to sleep early. Well, he's up before the bewitching hour of 3 a.m. He's actually up. Right. I it's thought you should get thing, up you know, at really? like 3 or 4 or something like that. Hmm. I can't explain it. I cannot explain it. It's a strange thing. But I'll tell you one thing. When you get up at 2 or 3 in the morning, you walk around, going outside, getting the newspaper. It's very quiet, very quiet, very quiet. Oh, I know. I've stayed up that late. But, you know, yeah, I don't. I don't wake up. The birds. We got raccoons, raccoons roaming around. Raccoons around. It's very peaceful. You know, it's a, it's right, a peaceful yeah. time of, of the day or of the you know the cycle. Peaceful. Drink, it is peaceful. I drink coffee. I read the Bible. I, um, I uh, watch video reviews. I watch baseball highlights. And um, do you pick up the so, paper? You know, it's a, in the morning. Go out and get the paper. Yeah, of course, get the newspaper. What paper do you read? The New Orleans Times Picayune. Picayune? Yeah, it's the newspaper is right here. It's kind of a trash, but, uh, What now? That's that's the local newspaper to you, though, right? Yeah, Times Picayune. They were. 1837. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've heard of them. I, I knew they were a very old newspaper. I have, I have heard of them. No, I don't have issues with anxiety. I don't think, per se. I just, uh, I get sleepy and I go. To <laughs> if you, if you know somebody that has insomnia, 10 milligram melatonin tablets. They're very cheap. They're over the counter. You get, well, you Burley, need I guess I prefer. The, they're both important. I guess I prefer. The, yeah, right. They're both important. I guess I prefer the New Testament. But uh, Ron, no, when I don't you go to work. What, what um, what time do you go into work? Like in the morning, early in the morning. Five fifty-eight. Five fifty-eight. I usually get in, I get into work at uh, seven thirty, eight o'clock. So I'm not that far from you. All right. But I, I like, I, I guess I have some kind of weird fixations, but um, I'm not really fixated on it. That's the point. I'm not fixated. I just like it. I'm hurt. All right. Now. Okay. All right. Tomorrow morning at dawn. Tomorrow morning at dawn. I'm going to do Larceny Bourbon. Thank you, David Garlapede. He got a $26 bottle. $26 bottle for $13. I'll repeat. $26 bottle, $13. Thank you for this gift. Half price. Half price. Half price. It's going up against Lantern. Thank you, Sonia. 
Thank you, Sonia. Sonia, we haven't gone out to eat in a while. Last time we went out to eat was at Mosca's. But then the scam, you know. Right. All right, now, um, here is some bourbon from uh, Buffalo Trace. It's got a uh, jockey and a horse on this bottle. And uh, she oh, gave man. she gave me the bottle because she, she gave up drinking. This would run you about 60 bucks, 60 bucks a bottle, if you're lucky. But I got it for free. She gave it to me. That would be a taste challenge tomorrow. And uh, that's it for me. Uh, Friday night, we got Fandango Friday. I got um, a liqueur. I've got a liqueur, and it's ready to roll. So uh, get ready, and I know everybody else will, too. So here's James P. Well, with his promos. What was the liqueur you had again, Ron? For Fandango? Uh, uh, I have to check on that. Okay, James. Um. I, I uh, well, of course, I look forward to Fandango Friday, and uh, uh, you know, people that work graveyard ships, uh, sh ships, sh shifts, are are very uh, eccentric uh, peoples. I'm, I'm I'm being kind. That's uh, always true. Yeah, I well, no, I work graveyard ships and I work very normal ships, and then overnight people are. They're friendlier. They're definitely friendlier, but it's it's like a it's like it's a, a different diner. world out there. It's like time. a diner waitress. They're all they all got heavy duty issues. The ones that work overnight in the diners, but uh, you know who, <laughs> who, who would really, you're probably right. Yeah, who would accept that their whole life is to work? I mean, I did it when I was very young. I was in in my right. late teens. I used to work the night shift at McDonald's, twenty four hours. Oh, that's right. Uh, the drive-through is twenty. Yeah. Is overnight. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the uh, I watched Mr. Terio. I watched a video on YouTube of this young man from Louisiana, and he, the, the video is about a very common reptile in Louisiana, called the broadhead skink, and they get about a little over a foot long. Oh yeah. And, they're attractive. They get they get certain times of the year, like the remaining season, the males get a red head, big red head, and um, they run up. They live in the trees, and they they eat insects and anoles. You know those little green lizards with the with the dewlap. Yeah, yeah they eat those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A broadhead skink, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm looking forward to Fandango Friday, and uh, um, I think I'm doing. A Sunday night. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to uh, go live with uh, Paul Anthony Manthea, who is doing a, an event with his rock band, a special event, and he said he's going to set up the laptop. So that should be interesting. Putting putting the musical event on on uh, on uh, live stream, Waffle House. Uh, you know, as a kid, there was a place called Panama's, and they specialized in Vanilla ice cream with freshly made Belgian waffles. I mean, a, a Ooh, stack of like several inches of vanilla ice cream. Excellent, excellent. Anyway, um, actually, this this wouldn't be bad on ice cream too. I mean, you know, um, Heaven Hill is a great a company uh, as far as the best uh, bourbon for the buck at a low price. It, and they don't advertise. People haven't heard of it, but if you stumble on it, you'll see what a great value it is. I go to sleep about 2:33 a.m. So I, when 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 Mr. Terio is making his coffee, I am uh, tucking myself in. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, right? It, it is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. That's right. <laughs> I'm kind of somewhere I in have, between. Uh, for, for Fan Day Friday, I remember now, I have Sheepdog, Sheepdog, Peanut Butter Whiskey. Sheepdog, Peanut Butter Whiskey. Sheepdog. Hmm. What? You want shout out? Shout out? I don't have any shout outs. <laughs> shout okay. shout out. I'll, I'll, I will be joining, uh, you know, Fan Day Friday. That's next on my list. About it though. Okay. All right. And now BC might have some shout outs, and then we're going to get off the air. 
Well, well, I've got a video that I'm going to be doing Saturday of the Edmund Fitzgerald by the Great Lakes Brewing Company, which kind of throws me through the loop every time I hear the Great Lakes Brewing Company. I think they're based in Michigan, but they're actually in Ohio. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Edmund Fitzgerald down in Lake Superior. So, I mean, <laughs> that's why I think it's a Michigan-based beer until I figure yeah, out. I've, I've, I've had that. I've had the Edmund Fitzgerald uh, Stout by Great Lakes, and it's, it was very good. I, excellent. Yeah, I haven't had it yet, so I'm coming to this blind as well. So your video, I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had it. I've had it. It's good stuff. Yeah, hey, Ron, is, uh, uh, I can show you this this, this book I'm reading here. So okay, Ronnie's going to show us a book. I just anything bought this else, book BC? In, um, uh, that's about it. I mean, uh, I don't have anything else going on. As far as Friday, joined, I mean, uh, you you join Michael, like you join Michael Hilton's show uh, on the weekends. Oh, right? uh, yeah, on Saturdays, uh, Western Beer Reviews. Yeah, I'm generally on his show. Did he put up uh, the link? Because he, I never saw the link. Um, he, I, I haven't seen it today, but uh, what was that? Uh, he posted one last Saturday. Which we were on, and then I seen the one where he was on like really late. I mean, late, where he was like passed out. Yeah. <laughs> so Sunday, Sunday he was Sunday he did the show early, and I, I'm not going to drink that early. And you know, for him it's early because it's three hours it's uh, Pacific time. But he, I remember when he passed out, he took that off his uh, YouTube channel. He fell asleep on the on the sofa. <laughs> and passed out drunk, and I took my pillow and I put it like this. I started, I started uh, yeah. snoring. I was snoring. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. <laughs> and then I quietly left, and I left him there. That's the second time I did that. He fell asleep on the couch. I left him there with the show <laughs> still going live. <laughs> I've seen yeah, that a I mean, number of times. Uh, people. Uh, so. Um, so anyway, um, so let's see, Ronnie. It, uh, thank you for joining, uh, James. Oh, thank I just you wanted for to show you real quick. Uh, I picked these... up. I picked up this book at the local uh, okay, history, yeah, right. the local history society here. Florida Seminole Wars, eighteen seventeen. This is a pretty interesting book. You know, there was a tribe that lived in the Florida Keys called the Calusa. Well, the Semin so the Seminole Wars are not very well covered by history classes, you know, U.S. history classes, but it was a big deal. I think it's taught more in Florida because it took place in Florida, but it's actually a pretty big deal for the whole U.S. history, especially military history, if you, th if you think about it. A lot of the um, people who, in the, who fought in the Mexican-American War and the Civil War cut their teeth in, in the... Florida Seminole Wars. Seminole, Seminole right. Wars. Yeah. They, even Seminole Seminole movie, they even made a big, they even made a big Hollywood uh, A list production movie about that war. All right, now what was um, it called? which I watched. I can't remember, but it, I mean it was probably mostly fiction, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, Technicolor, Technicolor film. Um, well, so we have Friday coming up. And I'll have the uh, Sheepdog Peanut Butter Whiskey. BC, you're welcome to join. James, of course, I know he has interesting uh, liqueurs. Ronnie S., who might be getting a little tired of liqueurs, but I can understand that. And no, then, but, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep with yeah. you. If I've got any questions, anybody, I'll get a hold of you. Anybody can join. You know, anybody's welcome to join. What now, BC? Uh, oh, I said if I've got any questions, I'll get a hold of you, Ron. Uh, oh yeah, you know. Because uh, I mean, I know you're more knowledgeable about this than I am. In I mean, I've heard of liqueurs like say, well, I don't know if schnapps are the right thing, but I know liqueurs. Yeah, those are. I had a, I had a last week. Yeah, so, any kind of flavored, any kind of flavored liquor, any kind of flavor, they're pretty easy to find. And now with all these little airplane bottles, you can get them really cheap. You don't have to waste yeah. your money or you know anything on these big bottles, little bottles, man. 
Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't get stuck with anything like two 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 fifty. They all different low prices. Just get, get a little bottles, stock up on them. Yeah, it's like I bought a bottle right, now, of uh, now every bought a bottle of absinthe and it was a fifth. And I bought that two years ago. <laughs> so I mean, two years ago. No. Yeah, exactly. Get the little, get the little yeah. ones. Get the little ones. Me, me, All right, yeah. now James oh, and Don are going to close this out. The cola accompaniment, and um, <coughs> and that'll be. I appreciate everybody for joining. Okay, Mr. Thank Cassidy, you thank thank you for everybody. And Mr. Cassidy, could you look up the Hakawi uh, Indian tribe, please? Where where they, they where they actually came from. You remember the Hakawis when they said, It is balloon. <laughs> I heard, uh, what's his name? Sergeant O'Rourke was uh, uh, was not very nice to rang with Jane. If you know what I mean, in real, you know, behind the scenes. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't he uh, bewitched? I don't know. I don't know anything about Elizabeth Montgomery's show except I watched it. But I mean, F true. You know, Sergeant O'Rourke and was you was yeah, bothering sure. Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I can't spell it out because this is Ronald Tirio is the host. On my show, I can say anything. <laughs> if I won the Powerball lottery, I want to open up a microbrewery near Ronald called the Krusty Crawdad Brewery and Distillery. Sounds good. Arr. Party har har. Party har har. You just know. started our insane pirate ship. Please walk the plank and until you <coughs> expedited the ship. Uh, yeah, he bothered Wrangler Jane. He, 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 yeah. He, he, the little filly was, was lassoed. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ron, for having me on your show. Yes, a bosom's whistle. Yes, a bosom's whistle.